It's Bruce Millington, Paul Keeley, Mark Boylan and Frank Hickey from Paddy Power. We're looking ahead to Sunday's meetings and the big race in terms of quality is the 12.50 at Navan. Features a horse who impressed the absolute hell out of me last time. Next destination. I guess he's going to be fairly short, Frank. You haven't got prices yet, have you? We haven't got prices yet, no. I imagine he might be favourite, but I Ooh. wouldn't be 100% sure. Did you like him last time or are you going to take him on? Uh, I thought he was absolutely unbelievably impressive. But um, Paloma Blue, Blue jumped terribly that day. Um, and someday it is solid, but I don't think he's a superstar. I, I would be wary of backing him. I think that this Cracking Smart is a really, really good horse. Um, he's win a Cork the last day. He absolutely ran all over Robin Desfari and Fabulous Saga. I know it was horrible ground to Cork last weekend, but Fabulous Saga was very impressive and winning was a grade three over three miles there. Um, this crack and smart. He he's going to the radar a little bit because the yard have Samco, but trust me, he's very, very good. And I think he might actually surprise next destination on, on Sunday. I always trust you, Frank. Uh, Mark, who do you think will win the twelve fifty? Yeah, next destination, Bruce. Very impressed with him uh, at Nace, but I'm just wondering a little bit about that performance. It was very impressive, but was it deceiving on the eye a little bit? I know that someday fell next time with the third and fourth have both been beaten in their subsequent starts. Uh, crack and smart is a really exciting horse, and I think he's the most likely winner here. Um, go, you know, going forward, he could develop into a real Albert Bartlett sort. Um, you know, Gordon, he's no shortage of him, but I think just behind Sam Crow is this fella. I think there's. There mightn't be as much between them at, at this stage of their career as, as, as many may think. I'd be very, very sweet in him. But one to give a, a mention to there that will be a bigger price, but one that will pay his way is Delta Work. Barry Garrity is an interesting uh, booking there for Gordon. The third string, apparently. But the blue cap we've seen carry to success many times for Jiggenstown. This horse, you know, you, you want to punch us down maiden hurdle doing handstands in May. And he was weak in the market at Nace when he ran behind early doors in Murray de Vee. And that form has been boosted since, you know. But he stayed with him. It was support that day. And he was his first run after a break. But... He was third to Sam Crow last time. I think he has scope to improve. He would definitely win races this year, but crack and smart. I'd be disappointed if he got beat on in the Navin Navas hurdle. You're a Jiggins Town man, are you? What are you, Frank? Jiggins Town or Giggins Town? I'm, I'm born to Giggins Town, I think. What about you, guys? Uh, oh, I was told by all the Irish lads when I went over there that it's definitely Jiggins Town. So I don't know. I think it was Justin O'Hannon absolutely swears blown it's Giggins Town. Really, really? He once said very dismissively, I have no idea why anyone would call it anything else. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I have to clarify that one now, Jesus. I, uh, you don't ask too many questions now in that organisation, but I'm sure that they won't mind that one. No, absolutely. It's the Irish equivalent of Southwell and Southall. Kills, have you got a view on this? Uh, there could be a Cheltenham winner lurking here. Uh, right, yeah, there could be. I mean, it could be a very, very good race. Obviously, next to this nation had good bumper form as well, fourth in the champion bumper, but um, cracking smile, race post ratings. You know, what he's done and done comfortably... Fourteen pound clear at the moment, so you know next destination does have to step up on what he's shown. He looked, he obviously can because he won so easily. Um, I always find these races hard because you get a lot of horses that won their maiden hurdles and you know at odds on pulling you know carts, but we don't really know. So it would be a waiting game for me. But they're, they're two fascinating horses. They certainly are. Uh, take us through the rest of the Navin card, lads. You first, Frank. What do you like? Um, there was nothing else really caught my eye to be honest. Okay, um, mate. that's all right. Yeah. Don't you worry. Um, what about you, Mark? Have you got anything else for us at Navin? Yeah, I've got one there in the three o'clock there, the two mile one handicap chase. Don't kick nor bite. Um, this, she's seven pounds lower over fences than she is over hurdles. Ran well at Gore last time behind one that it was turned over there at uh, Tremor on Thursday over hurdles, but it's just a better chaser than a hurdler. I wouldn't be getting too worked up about it. But her, her jumping is the reason why she is seven pounds lower over fences and hurdles. She's not very economical, but Barry Garrity is an absolute genius at getting these horses to jump, getting them rhythms. I've seen him do it time and time again this summer on, you know, Galileos that shouldn't be doing things like that. He's, he's just excellent. And this her this uh, mayor's only win over fences came with Barry on board. She hasn't won since even. Um, and, you know, she likes a strong pace, too. I think that would help her. And sizing titanium, he has been in a point-to-point lately. I think he's going to go. He likes to get on with things in front. And, you know, she got up to three pounds, I think. Don't kick her bite for the run at Gore last time. You know, I, I definitely think there's still more in the in the tank with her. She she could be one that kind of went under the radar a little bit. Righty-ho. Well, they're also racing at Carlisle, Chelmsford, Southall and Thurlis uh, on a very busy Sunday. Um, Kills, have you sussed anything elsewhere? Uh, yeah, 140 Carlisle, uh, first of all. St. John Henry, trained by David Pipe. Now, since David Pipe started trading, 
Um, 16 of the 32 horses he sent to Carlisle to finish in the first two. 11 of them won. Uh, another seven to finish third or fourth. So they're not just going up there for the air. Uh, St. John Henry... He's a real out and out stayer, and he found two miles seven furlong too short for him at, at Lingfield last time. Just sort of plugged on into third. This is three mile two on heavy ground, right up his alley. Um, I think he's got to go well. Um, in the 215, a uh, Potemps qualifier, there's a horse there called Cooking Fat, trained by Diane Sayer. Now, he's been running over fences, and he is actually declared for a chase uh, at Doncaster tomorrow. But if he doesn't run there, and he runs in this, uh, I think three mile on deep ground is what he wants. So he's got a far better chance of winning this than he has got winning tomorrow. So you have to keep an eye on what happens there. Uh, there was one at Savile, if I can try and find it. Uh, there's a... Mayor, there's a, yeah, the Mayor's Handicap Hall, 235. Might take a chance on Bayer, uh, trained by Michael Appleby. Got Richard Johnson on. Um, missed, missed about two and a half years. Came back last year, ran in a couple of chases, and then a handicap hurdle. Showed nothing at all. Uh, but was rated 125. Now down to 108. Had, had a break. Might come back fresher. And, you know, can't believe he's booked Richard Johnson just for the sake of it. Jolly good. Anything else uh, at Thurley's Mark? Um, well, I, I think in the bumper of Thurlis uh, there's an interesting one there, Rhinestone, Joseph O'Brien's horse. Now, before this ran at Punchestown, it was beaten by Athenan, who no means think very, very highly of. But uh, it was you know, there were really, really great reports about this Rhinestone prior to it. There was talk that he could be even close to listed class if he's running on the flat. Now, he was turned over, but Athenan has gone on and won a Cork since. I think he'll benefit from that initial experience. Could be a different prospect now. And just as uh, Carlisle, uh, I give a mention to actually... Far from me being Mr. Moneybags here by any means, but I've got a, a share in a mare that runs, or a filly that runs in the bumper at Carlisle in the 315, Derriana Spirit. Um, Nicky Richards uh, has been absolutely a gentleman to me. I, I uh, played a little bit of music before and uh, I gave uh, an app I did to the Inter Jockeys Fund a couple of gigs over there in the north of England. And Nicky sat down with me and he said that he'd like to give me something in reward for, for going over and doing it. And because uh, I wasn't asking for it at the time, and uh, he gave me 10% in the mare called Marida and she won four and we had great times at Oran. She retired and Nikki has given me a share in this this filly now, Darianna Spirit. So look, hopefully she can run well. I'll be travelling over, please God, I've been well. But uh, I see the, the the going description when I looked last look was heavy frozen. Yeah, there's an inspection, so, so you better. I hold really hope fine, uh, that's it. I hope I hope we get a run. But uh, look, hopefully she she can do herself justice anyway. We'll be, we'll be giving her a roar on and any uh, any support in the racing post towers would be very much appreciated. <laughs> Don't you worry, I'll cheer on. And what a nice thing to hear that um, Nicky Richards goes up at least a stone in my handicap for that. Good man, Nicky. That's a lovely thing to do. Frank, anything else for you? Yeah, there's a couple that interest me in the um, 12.35 at Carlisle, horse of Brian Ellison's called Tom and Jerry. Um, he won, what, his first three bumpers, then won two novice hurdles, went to Aintree for grade one in 2016, was put off Went off only 10 to 1 in the race of Valley Optic 1. Um, he was off then for 18 months, reappeared at Carlisle over hurdles over two and a half miles, probably a touch short for him. He was beaten three quarters of length by Desert Cry off a mark of 132. Now he's gone up to 135 and goes chasing, but um, he could be, I won't say he could be anything, but I think he's progressive enough and hopefully, as long as it doesn't bounce, I think he'll take a fair bit of beating. In the 140, um, I might go against Paul here, which isn't the wisest thing to do, but. Um, this horse on Shanley Kiklista has been the headlines for maybe the wrong reasons um, with the last year at Cheltenham. But he was third on his first start for Rome McNally at Down Royal in the handicap. But on the day, it actually turned out he had a possible task trying to give weight to Poor Man's Hill, who was running off a mark of 106. Like to put in context, I think Poor Man's Hill placed in the Troy Town off a mark of 121. That was almost impossible. He went to Fairy House in the race that presenting Percy absolutely hacked up in. And he was smashing the betting. I think he was 16 to 1 into 8 to 1. Um, now, he disappointed there, but this is probably a little bit easier. Uh, James Bowen, who is one of the best claimers about, around, claims five off as well. It's a very eye catching booking. And I think uh, he'll give you a run for your money in that race. And in Turles, taking a bit of a flyer here, but in the 240, pair of brown eyes is a rate about 140 over fences. Uh, he goes back over hurdles here off a mark of 119. He had a spin a couple of weeks ago. I'm taking a bit of a chance. It might just be a spin for something over Christmas, but um, off a mark of 119, and they're claiming seven off as well. He really ought to get involved. Two miles in heavy ground or soft ground should be no problem for him. 
Um, and that's it. Lovely, well done, chaps. It's not quite it because I need a winner for from each of you over Christmas. Any race, any course, oh just God. give me a good. But it's on the running order. Read the bloody <laughs> running order, kid. I'm going to say I'm going to say Bristol De Maio. I really hope that he isn't just a, a Haydock horse, but I thought what he did at Haydock was absolutely sensational. Um, if you look at a handicap chase, it was run the next time the chase was about he beat by ten by more than ten seconds, but. Five of those were from four out to the line as well. He was really motoring and cantering at the same time. And I don't think he's been given the credit uh, he probably deserves. And I hope he proves uh, everyone wrong and wins well, the King George. It wasn't too painful, was it? No. The idea that you wouldn't fancy anything over Christmas is ridiculous. Anyway, Mark, I'm sure you've uh, fastidiously read the running order and have got a winner for us. Well, I hope, I hope Paul is right there, by the way. Brian Sheeran laid me 10 to 1 last night with Bristol Demai. He can't have him, so I, I'd absolutely love if, if you're writing and collecting after Christmas. But uh, no, a horse there that I think if he, if he turns up at Christmas that will take the world to beat in his real steel. Now, there's been a few different real steels. There's been one, a Japanese horse that Ryan Moore won on in Dubai last year. There was a, a Mouse Morris and a Philip Bentham on the chased home by tour once at Leperstown. But this one, I think he, lo he looks a bit special. He, he beat Daily Tiger in a bumper at Tardis. Um, uh, he's well thought of too that Daily Tiger his, his French farm is, is quite good and a uh, guy over there in France to be pally with he said that of the batch that came to Willie Mullins in the crop of Animix and them that this horse seemed to be right up there as, as, as the best of the ones that came over and the, the trainer not that I'd be overly familiar with it he apparently leaves plenty to work on he's only scratching the surface with them horses when they land and he's entering the future champions novice hurdle he's not short of speed and uh, I, if he lined up there he's, I think he can get 10 to 1 about him I'd be, I'd be confident enough that he'd give you a real good run and the other one, maybe just uh, Wait, I'm Super say, which, Sunday. Which race course and which day is that? Um, the Mark? 27th of December at Leopardstown. Lovely. The Paddy Power sponsored Future Champions Novice Hurdle. It'll be real steel, Willie Mullins. That's it. And the other one in the three mile squared financial Christmas hurdle, a grade one on the same day, Super Sunday. Jessica Harrington's horse ran a real lovely race and it's come back in the Hatton's Grace on soft ground, better on good ground. I was up at Jessica Harrington's for the launch of the Leopard Sound Christmas Festival on Monday. He is an intended runner. Uh, you know, he was a length and three quarters behind Nichols Canyon last time. And Nichols Canyon goes well fresh. This fella might have needed the run. And, you know, Nichols Canyon is two to one. This fella's tens. You know, it makes no sense to me. Um, so Super Sunday in the Christmas hurdle, the squared financial Christmas hurdle, and Real Steel in the Champions Novice hurdle on the 27th of December at Leopard Town. Christ, he can chat old Mark, can't he? Makes he can, DJ yeah. sound like Ryan Moore. Very impressive. <laughs> and Frank, who's your Christmas cracker? Oh, gosh. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple and some weird. Uh, to be honest, I've been saying for a while and I'm not going to back down. My bite's a good thing for that kick, George. I really, really believe so. Um, it just Kempton is his track. So like, I don't, short, I, though, I, isn't he, Frank? Oh, I'm not saying back him now. Wait till the day because that field is going to stand up. You're going to get Bristol to mine. You're going to get Fox Norton. You're probably going to get Disco. You're going to get Whisper. It was confirmed today. That field is going to be deep. You could get two to one or nine. You possibly could get two to one or nine to four in the morning. Um, I'd be having a whack on that if he is. Um, yeah, I'd probably get killed for saying this, but a horse I've share and Fuart runs next Friday, hopefully in Dundalk. Um, he had a he was disappointed in the first three runs for us uh, at Galway, the Curra, and Limerick, but. Returned to the old weather at Dundalk the last time. He was just touched off by Catty Man of Mick Halfords, who went in again subsequently. Um, we're hoping he might break his duck for us next week. What's his uh, name from? Who are it? How would you F -U spell that? F U W A I R T. Oh, good. Um, Thank God you spelled that out for us. He should go well, hopefully, as long as the draw in doesn't do him. Um, this one's completely from left field. There was a horse yesterday running in Tremor that I thought was very interesting called Princess Mahler of. John Joe Walsh. Now, one of my uh, esteemed Irish racing expert colleagues told me he thought this would be more lined up for Limerick than Shmore, but it was just touched off in Shmore yesterday. If this horse called Princess Maller turns up at Limerick over Christmas, um, I'd be having a bet on that. And my missus asked me uh, last week what I wanted for Christmas, and what I told her is I want Coney Island to win the old Lexus on the 28th of December. This horse... Oh, it's just, I love him. And I think if he comes back, um, I, I, I'm getting good reports of how he's working. And I think I've been reading a lot on Twitter about York Hill, Size and John, and they're completely underestimating Coney Island. Um, I think you're doing so at your peril. Oh, yeah, of course, might... we've backed him for the Gold Cup on your say so, haven't we? Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm after having a right whack on him. I'd probably have a whack on him at Christmas as well. I think he's underestimated. Um, and I wouldn't be writing them off at all. Um, I think stuff. You, you, you could get eight or ten to one on the day on that and 
the mental price. Tremendous. Thank you very much, Frank. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Kiels. Thank you for listening or watching. And if you enjoy the podcast, do please rate, review and subscribe on iTunes. Paddy Power are offering huge money-back specials for the whole of December. Head to paddypower.com now for more information on the selected races. Max £10 refund per customer. T's and C's apply. 18 plus.